Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. We are back with another standard chess video uh, and I'm excited so let's jump right in. All right we're getting paired in the chess.com rapid pool a 15 plus 10 game and let's see who we get paired against. All right we get paired against Miami Al 1973 from the US. Let's go for one d4 Let's see if Miami Al is here, or maybe it's Miami AI. It says the game will auto abort in about 40 seconds, but let's see if he's here. All right, we get a move, pawn to d5. Now I'll put my knight on f3 first. Uh, and I may go for a Coley system today, or it might be a Catalan, I don't know yet. Hmm, all right, let's play. What should we do? Let's play the Coley system. Uh, I've been playing this for a long time. Now my opponent does have some choices. Uh, if he's a Slav player, then he'll come out here or here, uh, or play C6. But if he's a Queen's Gambit decline player, He'll play the principled move and put his pawn on e6. But it is his choice. A lot of players like to take advantage of this move order by bringing their bishop out. And then I go c4 and queen b3 and try to uh, try to put pressure on this b b7 pawn. There's a line here, bishop to f5, c4, e6. Okay, you go c5. I'm going to put my pawn on c3. Now, if knight c6, I, I believe I'm going to take on c5. And we get sort of like a triangle reversed. Uh, and that should be good for us. So e6 is played. So we are going to get a Coley system. I'll put the bishop on d3, as I normally do in these positions. I'm expecting knight to c6. And then I'm going to castle. And we're going to see where the game goes from there. Uh, it depends on what my opponent chooses to do, whether he chooses to put his bishop on e7 or d6. These are the two main squares where black can put his bishop. So I'll castle here, and my opponent should not play bishop to a6. Uh, this is a very well-known opening trap. Uh, all right, knight to d7 is played. Good choice, not playing, uh, not playing bishop a6. Now... There is knight to e5, so if knight d2, bishop d6, uh, takes, takes, okay, I'm not sure how much I exactly love that. Uh, the knight on d7 does retain some good options of, of coming to uh, c5 to recapture which is why it, it appears to be a pretty good move. Uh, I, I have two plans here. I could either go for e4 somehow or go for knight e5. These are my two choices. So I'm leaning towards playing for knight e5. So knight e5 takes, takes, knight back to d7. I go f4, oh, oops. So knight e5 takes, takes, knight back to d7, pawn to f4. Ah, my arrows are all, all over the place today. Okay, let's put our knight on e5. This is a common idea in the Coley. Uh, and I'm expecting my opponent to take this knight, although he doesn't have to. If bishop e7, I might have uh, this knight c6 move, just taking the bishop pair and not allowing uh, black to castle. So I'm not expecting him to play that. Uh, I am expecting him to probably take my knight. And then he might try and play against the weaknesses I'm creating after playing f4, namely this e3 pawn. So, uh, and he can also play against the e5 pawn in some variations like takes, takes, the knight moves back. And then he's trying to play this f6 move to undermine my center. Uh, what else does he have? I guess he has some knight e4 ideas, although I, I don't think he'll play right now and he doesn't. So he goes for this g6. He's he's trying to play his bishop to g7. Um, 
Okay, I'm wondering if it's worth playing for a bishop to b5. There's a6, but then I, I go queen a4. And I am not letting him get out of the center. That's the whole idea. That uh, I'm not letting him escape with his king because bishop b5, bishop to g7, queen a4. If he castles, I take the knight. Uh, yeah, I guess he's I guess he's sort of getting out there though. So I guess there's no point in uh, in trying too hard to stop him from to stop him from castling. Uh, now my dilemma is: Do I go f4, or will f4 just be a weakness in the position? Because it is possible that I play f4 and then I don't get an attack because he has this pawn structure right here that's protecting him well. Uh, so, all right. Hmm. Interesting position. Maybe we go knight d2, wait one move, just to see how, how he reacts. Uh... But yeah, this f4 plan isn't totally ridiculous. There are some points behind it. But what else? What are the what are the other plans I can play for? I can play a4, a5 as one plan. Just uh pushing my pawns over there. I may just do it a4, start start playing over here. And if my opponent takes my knight, I, I think I'm still good with taking back and playing f4. And if my opponent doesn't react, I can play this a5 move. He might play a6. This is one thing that he can definitely do. And then I might play b3, oops, b3, bishop to a3. Try to put pressure on that diagonal but I'm not entirely sure yet. I might also just go knight to d2, f4, e4, play like this. Uh, yeah, there's nothing wrong with nothing wrong with that, really. But we won't get the traditional Kohli system attack here because our opponent is fianchettoing this bishop and thus destroying some of our chances of some sort of kingside attack. This uh, pawn wall right here is pretty effective. So, all right, knight takes. Let's take back with our pawn. I'm expecting knight back to d7. All right, that's played. Now we sort of have to go f4. And f6 at some point is, is weakening us. Okay, we're going to go knight d2. And we are playing pretty fast, but we know our ideas. Um, now I'm thinking about a5. Is a5 a move I want to play? Bishop b7, a6. Bishop to c6. That doesn't look so bad to me. Just playing a5. Uh, now I have to consider variations in which my opponent takes on a5. So a5, c4, bishop e2, takes, queen a4, we're recovering it. So I'm not horribly worried about that. Uh, a5, bishop b7, a6, here, c4. Okay, and if I go e4 in the current position, d4, takes, takes, knight f3, Yeah, I don't know if I want to play it in the current position because he does have d4. And then maybe I go knight c4. Hmm, that is interesting. Maybe I will go for that just because it, it looks pretty dynamic. e4 seems like the correct sort of move here. Both e4 and a5 are ideas. So I'll keep both of them in mind. But if d4, now I can put my knight on c4 and jump into d6, which is something that I want in the position as well. So he goes here. This is a wise choice. And now I will capture on d5. 
see how he captures back. Both captures are viable. I'm expecting bishop takes for some reason, but I, I know that both are possible. Uh, maybe after bishop takes, I go bishop e4. That seems like it could be good. Uh, just challenging this bishop on its diagonal, getting rid of one of his good pieces, although it, the light square bishop is also a good piece of mine. If he takes this way, then I have to think of something else. Maybe then I go a5. If he takes that way. And then I'm threatening a6, queen e2. Okay, he does take this way. This is an interesting option. I think I can go for this a5 now. And my idea is basically that uh, I want to create this nuisance on a6 by pushing, pushing pawn to a6. And in some end games, I can even sack something on b6 and promote my a pawn. So that's thinking a long, a long ways into the future, but I think that this is a good idea. I don't think black should take. I'm watching out for some sort of d4, just opening this diagonal, making this bishop a monster. But I think we have bishop to e4 in a lot of those positions. Uh, f6 is also one of my opponent's ideas to watch out for. f6, I have e6, and that looks strong. If I can get e6 in, I think I'm doing relatively well there. So I won't worry about f6 in the current position, just because of this e6 option. And after knight to b8, I go like a6 maybe, bishop c6, f5, and that position looks monstrous. So I won't expect f6 right away. Another idea I might have here is bring the knight to f3. Then this is strange and it wastes a lot of tempi, but if I can go bishop e3, bishop f2, bishop h4, just basically reroute the bishop around. Okay, my opponent plays this queen e7 move. He is hinting that he wants to play f6. Okay, so if I go a6, oops, bishop to c6, queen e2, f6, e6, rook, mm. okay, if queen e2, there's this uh, c4 move. Bishop c2 and then f6, e6, knight c5, and he's getting his knight into a really nice square. But I still have my f5 idea there. So that looks like it could be good. I'll play queen e2 for now, just waiting with this a pawn. I, I might go a6 soon, but I'm giving myself some more flexibility in case black decides to do this. Uh... Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure whether it makes a world of a difference, whether I go a6 right away or not. So if I go a6 here, bishop, bishop here, uh, bishop, b5, takes, takes, and now f6. That looks pretty good for my opponent, actually. Uh, so if I go bishop b5 right away, there's a6. I take the knight, takes, and, oops, I take this b-pawn. But he is recapturing the b-pawn. So that might not be the best try. Let's say I go knight f3, there's f6. Rook e1, f6, e6, knight f8, f5, okay. So let's play rook to e1. I like this idea. As long as we can get in e6 and f5 uh, on concurrent moves, then we'll be okay. But my opponent has a good deal of pressure here. Uh, it is something I have to watch out for, and we're about equal on the clock. So we're doing okay clockwise. Uh, yeah, we're doing okay on the clock, but I'd rather build up more of a time advantage. Flagging isn't really much of an option in this time control. Uh, 
because there's this 10 second increment, but getting a time advantage can still be beneficial. So A6 is one idea I have here, but I feel like right now I'm responding to my opponent's threats, which is not something that I'd ideally like to be doing, but my opponent is in the better position to be making threats right now. I think knight to f3 should be my next move. Uh, and it's just a it's just a nice well-rounded move. So if my opponent doesn't do anything too drastic, I think I'll put my knight on f3, getting ready to develop my bishop and defending this e pawn some more. But the critical line here is f6, e6, c4, bishop c2. And yeah, then, then my opponent has to follow up somehow. Knight c5, f5. That doesn't look too terrible, so maybe I'll take it. Um, my opponent might have some d4 pawn sack in the future just to open up this line like I was talking about. But my next idea should be relatively straightforward in that I just want to put my knight on f3. So he goes c4. I'm going to back it up with this bishop. And now, okay, he puts his knight on c5. So he's changing up the move order a little bit. He's saying, I do want to go f6, but I won't do it right away because that will allow you to play e6. So he's playing this way first. And now if I go knight to f3, he has f6. And what do I do about that? Maybe at that point, I try to break things open with f5. Takes, takes, takes. That doesn't look half bad. Maybe that's the way to play. Knight to f3, f6, f5. Just uh, breaking the position open. Could be worth a try. How else can I respond to f6? Uh, so if I go f5 right away, then he takes, take, take. I can't imagine that there's really enough there. Um, okay, let's put our knight here for now. There is knight e4, which is a bit annoying in all of these lines, but I have to get my knight out somehow. Now, my next idea, I feel, is bishop to e3, bishop d4. Just activate this bishop as well. But f6 sort of puts a hamper on that. So if f6, can I go bishop e3 anyways? Uh, okay, so bishop e3. Takes, 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 takes. Queen takes. Yeah, it would just be a sacrifice if I did it. So f5 is the move I'm considering. That's my top consideration right now. And I think I'm just going to do it. It's just dynamic enough that that it might work. And I'm threatening to take this. So my opponent has to respond to this somehow. I think he has to take. And if he takes on f5, I have a decision between pawn to e6 and bishop takes f5 but i didn't see i didn't even see e6 uh before just now but it looks like a tempting option so he takes if i take back with my bishop let's just analyze the most straightforward line first takes bishop takes h7 king takes knight g5 King g8, queen h5, bishop f6. And where's my mate? Rook e3. Hmm, I don't think there's mate there though. g takes f5, bishop takes, takes, bishop h7, king h7. Knight g5, king g8, queen h5. Bishop to f6, rook to e3, knight e4.
Knight e4, I guess I take on e4, so. Okay, bishop takes g5, rook to g3. Knight e4, bishop takes g5, knight takes g3, bishop e7, knight h5. So that's not possible. I'm sorry if this is a little bit hard to follow, but I'll show some of the variations afterwards. Um, okay. So he's thinking about it. He takes. I think that's the best move. Now if I take, takes, do I have knight g5 right away? h6. Is that leading anywhere? Queen to h5. Makes some serious threats. Queen f6. Queen f6 is such a solid defensive move. So, okay, takes here, knight g5, h6, queen h5, queen f6, rook f1. And do I have enough there? I feel like... That's such a sharp position. And I've, I just get the gut feeling that the sharpness of that position favors me. Okay, so if I take this, I don't know if he's gonna do anything other than take this E pawn. But okay, let's say I go E6, let me just consider my other option. Knight to e4, and then I go knight d4, and I'm solidifying e6 and uh, also attacking this f pawn. Um, hmm. Okay, so e6 is very tempting as well. Man, that's that's a good move though. I just feel as though this is more dynamic, so I'm gonna play this. And it it's more in the spirit of the position to play for mate here, essentially. So I'm gonna do it. He takes. Now I want knight to g5. This is what I'd calculated. Now I'm threatening this pawn. I'm expecting h6, and then I want to go queen to um, h5. So I, I do expect h6 because that seems like the best defensive try. Um, okay, so he goes h6. Now, if I go queen h5, he takes my pawn, I go check, he goes here, and I go rook f1. And that's over. Has to be. That has to be game. I can't imagine him surviving that, so I'm just going to play this. I don't even need to concretely really see what it is just because I I believe that that this is enough. Um, okay. So now my threat is I want to go queen to g6 and weasel my way in this way. Uh, yeah, queen g6 takes away the possibility of this. Maybe I also want to go like this, bishop h7, bishop g6, play a little bit of tickle. Uh, and then maybe knight f7. But this is starting to look good. I, I have faith in this position. I think we're starting to get a bit of an attack. Queen to f6, I have rook to um, f1 with the idea of bishop h7. 
So I'm expecting queen to f6 here, but maybe my opponent will surprise me with something better. Can you go rook f8? So rook f8, knight h7. Here, bishop g6, maybe. I don't know what he's going to choose between rook f8 or, and queen f6, or maybe he'll do something completely different. He might be calculating this. He, yeah, he might be. Um, maybe he's trying to see if he has some way out. So I should probably calculate that too. Takes bishop h7, king moves, rook f1 check, bishop to g or bishop f6. Bishop takes g5, knight e4 check. Or not, not check. Knight e4. Oh, wait, but I take the knight. So, okay, I'm doing well there. Uh, there's also knight d7 guarding the bishop on f6. Okay, he goes there. That move I wasn't expecting. At all. Yeah, I was not expecting that. So if I play check, it seems like the most natural move. Give that check. Check, king moves, bishop to g6, attacking the rook. The rook moves, knight to f7 check. And does he give the exchange there, or what's his plan? He might be giving up the exchange there. But that position looks promising for me. And I don't believe king f8. I don't believe it. So let me drop this check in. I'm expecting king here, and then I go bishop to g6, attacking the rook. Yeah, this is very interesting. I was also briefly considering uh, king h8, queen g6, but I don't think that that's very good because it doesn't really make a concrete enough threat. So I'm going to step back here and just shoot for knight to f7, and he might just give up an exchange. Is That's what I'm expecting. He might just say enough is enough and, and play rook f8, rook takes f7, but I think I still have very good play in that position. I think my attack is still raging. I if if he goes bishop here, or sorry, rook here, uh, knight f7 takes takes. I am threatening this d5 pawn as well, and bishop takes h6. So he has to be careful. If this worst case, I feel I can just take it. So don't know. It feels like worst case I could just take that, um, but he's thinking. So he goes rook f8, I'm going to follow through knight f7. If he takes, I'll recapture with the bishop. If he doesn't take, let's say he goes here, then I want to take this one. And my pressure is strong in this position. Strong pressure. Uh, yeah, if he takes, I take back with my bishop. So I wonder what his plan is. He is in check. So king g8. Now, do I take with the bishop or knight here? If I take with the bishop, he goes rook takes. Yeah, I don't think I have enough there. Rook, okay, so takes. Yeah, no, I'll take with the knight. There are some tricks like king g8, bishop takes, rook 
f7, bishop h7, but he goes king f8. Okay, so he takes, I'll take back. And now I have two threats, I have this and I have this. And I believe on knight d3, I just go bishop takes h6. And this is such a powerful threat because uh, if he takes, I take with mate. And if he doesn't do anything about it, I just step back with my bishop and I have a nasty discovery mate. Not to mention that it's a, a queen winning tactic. So I think he should go here. But this is starting to look incredible for me. Okay, he goes there. That's a good move. Yeah, this is a very good move. Um, now I have to decide, do I want to take this pawn or... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Do I want to take the bishop or do I want to go queen to g6? I just had a mental lapse for a second there, but... Okay, uh... So if I take the bishop, queen takes my bishop, I go rook to f1, queen moves, maybe I go queen g6. I like that position a lot. Not to mention in these lines, I also have a takes b6 because of this rook. I have a, I have a pin going here. So what's my alternative? If queen g6... Rook to f8. But I don't see how that helps me. Bishop takes h6. Queen takes. Queen takes. Yeah, no, that's not good. So I'm just going to take this bishop. Allow him to take my bishop. And now my idea is rook to f1. And I'm sort of recompleting the castle uh, with the king on g1 and, and rook on f1. But the rook is much better on f1 than it was on e1, especially considering that I can't take this pawn. So my rook wasn't doing much on the e-file. Rook f1 seems like the natural move. And now I want to play a takes b6 and and this queen, uh, queen here. Okay, so he goes queen c7. Now queen g6 is a, is a dual purpose move because I threaten a takes b and I threaten bishop h6. And I actually also threaten rook f7. So this just seems like the move to play, queen g6. And I have these three monster threats. So yeah, that's just one of those moves that makes you feel good. And I'm very happy about it. Uh, yeah, we're, we're wrapping up here. Let's convert this. Let's convert this position. It looks very good. And I cannot complain at all. I I like all the threats here. There's bishop h6, rook f7, a takes b6. This is when I start licking my lips. But I cannot get complacent. Don't get cocky. Don't get cocky. Finish the game. I think there's some, some famous grandmaster has a quote that's like... Uh, the hardest game to win is a one game or something like that because you have so many options and you got cocky. So just got to stay focused. We're only up a one. We only have a one pawn advantage. Uh, our opponent has these strong center pawns. So although I believe it to be winning because of all these threats, uh, I'm just going to finish off the game. So my opponent's trying to think what to do. Maybe trying to create some uh, some counterplay, knight d3. Uh, if knight d3, I take on h6. Queen c5, I go king h1. Knight f2, I'll sack my rook. Queen takes and mate. So that doesn't appear to be working. It might be a good shot. I don't see what else to do other than go for knight e4 or knight to d3. Yeah, I'll just take this pawn. So he goes rook f8, he's trying to liquidate, but now I take on h6. And I'm ready to take back this rook with my rook. And this is this is a winning position. So we'll we'll pre-move that capture. He goes knight e4, but now I can take this rook. 
Maybe he has some sort of trick with queen c5. So let's just calculate this briefly. Um, So if, oh, wait, wait, so takes, 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 I actually cover c5 with my bishop. So he doesn't have queen c5. So if I take, he takes back and I play bishop takes f8, and he actually doesn't have a check on this diagonal, which is very important because otherwise he actually has a mate. Okay, we get a resignation. Good game, Miami Al. That was a nice one. I'm I'm very happy about that. Uh, if I just step back and, and see what happened there, uh, let's just go to the game report. Yeah, I'm curious to see what my accuracy was. Let's see what the accuracy is. I, I still don't see the game report. Uh, okay. All right, cool. So we got 94.6% accuracy and our opponent got 73.4. So our accuracy that game was very high. Let me just extend this window so you guys can see the board. Um, okay. And I'll extend it this way too. Okay, cool. So let me just look through the game briefly. We had this Coley system in which we played um, played like this, knight to f3. Uh, and yeah, everything was looking good. So b6 was a little bit strange to me. I I wasn't so sure about this move uh, just because, you know, usually black waits until they castle, but it seemed to work out okay for him. And I went for knight to e5. And yeah, a4. I just I thought a4 was a good try to to create pressure on the queen side, and as you guys saw in the end, it helped a little bit in creating this threat of of a takes b6 against against the rook. So that was good. My opponent takes. I take knight d7, and now yeah, the computer saying saying possibly e4 here. E4 is interesting. Uh, yeah, I, I guess I didn't really consider it, although I definitely should have. So e4, if knight takes e5, what's the idea? Is it just bishop b5 check? So bishop b5 check, and now bishop d7, we take on d5. Yeah, this is very strong. I, I should have considered this. Uh, if takes, takes, and the idea is that if black tries to take, we take the queen and play this rook e1 with a nice pin against the king. Uh, oops, with a nice uh, nice pin, and we have f4 coming just to win the knight. And this knight on e5 is like a deer caught in the headlights. So that's a good idea to know for next time, this e4. Uh, but I played f4, and now bishop to g7 was played. And here it's like a plus 2 advantage. Apparently c4 is critical. Just trying to break open the position. Uh, yeah, this is instructive, c4, and I was thinking bishop to b7, but... Apparently there's a there's a good advantage here. Takes takes and knight to c3, and we're just keeping up the keeping up the pressure. Uh, and there's this I guess e4 idea, but also just bishop to c4 and knight b5. All of this seems to be very good. So I guess if I trade off the light square bishops, I'm doing very well. And if takes, I take with this. Oh yeah, and this looks incredible. I have these squares. I have knight e4, knight d6. This is something I definitely should have considered. Uh, my errors are all over the place today. Yeah, okay, so that would have been good. But the way I played it also wasn't bad. I just played knight d2 and e4. This all looked good. Takes, takes. Um, and now a5. And yeah, I don't know if my opponent ever could have played f6 successfully. But rook e8, rook to, rook to e1. All right, let's see. Yeah, f6 here was suggested, but the computer doesn't suggest it anymore. Knight c5, and now I play knight to f3, f6, and 
I don't see my F5 move anywhere in sight in the computer's eyes, uh, at least not on the first three lines, but I do think that F5 was the best practical try. Uh, yeah, I, I do feel that way, that F5 created some good chances, but bishop to e3 at once, and after takes, how are we how are we saving the position? F takes e5, and what if he takes? Do I have bishop to e5? A6, okay, knight, knight takes e5. So I guess it just wants knight takes, queen takes, and then I move my queen. Uh, like queen f2, or queen d2. I was considering this line, but I, I just thought after knight e4 I didn't have too much. So knight e4, I, apparently I just, I go queen h4 or something like that. Queen h4, or bishop takes e4. Okay, yeah, I guess this is relatively equal. I have pressure, but I didn't want to play this because I felt like I would be the one that, that would be proving something, and my opponent's past e-pawn would be strong. So I play this f5 move instead. Uh, so g takes f5, and now let's see what the top move is. So it looks, looks like bishop takes f5. Look, okay, it's changing its mind. Um, yeah, looks like bishop takes f5 and e6, the two moves I was considering, are about equal. Um, but yeah, there's a takes b6 also. But I just take, and now the move to defend is knight to b3. So knight to b3, small advantage for white, about equal. And any other move is... Uh, is a strong advantage for white, so he takes. Now I go knight g5, that's the computer move. h6, queen to h5, computer move. Uh, bishop c8, yeah, I thought this was sketchy, and now I'm just plus five almost, just completely winning. Bishop h7 and bishop g6 is the precise continuation. Um, yeah, bishop g6, rook f8, and knight to f7. And this was all precise precise from here. Takes, takes. Uh, bishop g4. And yeah, we just got this good position. Rook to f1. And queen g6 was a monster move. I wonder if it's the best move here. Yeah, it is the best move here. Queen g6. And we just got a, a monster of a position. So I'm very, very happy with that game. Uh, it, was, it was nice from start to finish. We got a nice win in the Coley system with a super sweet attack. So we went from being on the back foot to uh, to going on an attack, which is great. So uh, if you noticed, I made a comment midway through the game that I feel like I'm just reacting to my opponent's threats and I don't want to do that. So I tried to figure out some way to break and that led to a monster attack. So hopefully you guys learned something about attack and the attacking mindset. And uh, definitely please subscribe if you haven't yet. It's 100% free and it helps me a lot. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this standard chess video and I'll see you guys in the next.